Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master Jesus. Glory be to God forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we honor you for another wonderful day. This is the day that you have made. We thank you. We are grateful. We are glad in it. We honor you, Almighty God. We declare there is none like you. In all of the heavens, in all of the earth, there is none worthy of our praise. No one deserves to be praised like you. You are the Almighty God. You are our living God. You deserve our praise. We honor you, Almighty God. We glorify your name. We say, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. What shall we say unto you, O God, but to thank you, but to appreciate you for a wonderful day. A glorious day, a day that you have made. And I thank you, Lord God, because you will do great things among your sons and your daughters today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for those that are joining evil right now. I thank you for those that are joining right now. I thank you for those that are joining evil right now. I thank you. I thank you for that family. I thank you for that brother, for that sister that are joining evil right now. Father, I know, Almighty God, you have a purpose, you have a plan for every family at this moment in time. It's a season of love, and I thank you. Father, dwell among us today by your power, by your spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, by your power, by your anointing, walk among us today. Let your name be exalted, let your name be magnified, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, we give you praise, I will give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. And I welcome you to church. And I welcome you to church. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. I trust that your Almighty God will do something great in your life, even this hour, that your Almighty God will bless you, that your Almighty God will heal you, that your Almighty God will sow a new, new thing in your life, something memorable in this last moment of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not miss God. You will not miss the blessing of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to go straight on to my sermon today because I believe that your mighty God has a plan for your life, has a plan for my life in the name of Jesus. Today I'm going to be talking on a subject I've entitled, A Time to Love. I love you. <laughs> a Time to Love. We're in that season. We're in that environment. There is love in the air. But there's a reason for that law. And so I say it is a time for law. A time where God gives us an opportunity to show love, where we experience love. Let's hear what the Bible says. Talk with me to Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. I will read beginning from verse 1 all the way to verse 4 and then I will skip to verse number 8. Hallelujah to Jesus. The word of God says there, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me join to verse number 4. And it says, with verse 8, the Bible says there in verse 8, the Bible says, A time to love and a time to hate. I will stop there. But look at what it says in verse 14. It says, I know that whatsoever God do it, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it or put to it, and nothing can be taken away from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. Again, I say to you, my friends, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, it is a time to love. It is a time to say, I love you. It is a time, some of us will find it hard to say, I love you. <laughs> you can display your love in several ways. Again, I say it is a time to love. That is the season, and this is that season, and this is the time to love. This is the season to give love. This is the season to demonstrate love. This is the reason where you also expect 
and to receive love in return. Hallelujah to Jesus. Follow me. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the different types of love today. That is not the essence of my sermon. You know, some people say there are four types of love. Some say there are seven types of love. But the major one, you have storage. You know, storage is simply what is when you like somebody. <laughs> you are fond of them. You are familiar with them. Number two is philia. Philia is a Greek word. That means it is a, it is, it is the kind of love you have for your friends. Or your siblings, because you are close with them, because of the time you spend with them. That is the number two kind of love. Number three kind of love is the eros kind of love. You know, where you call it is is it's that romantic love. You don't have romantic love for for your neighbor's wife. <laughs> you don't have romantic love for somebody else's husband. You know, it's a romantic love. You know, a, a, a sense of being in love. You know, or you love somebody. Hallelujah. And you also have what is called, some people have love for themselves. <laughs> you know, um, philosophy or something like that. That's what they call it. I can't remember. But it's, it simply means you love yourself. Some people love yourself, you know, because you cannot love other people except you love yourself. So it can be a good thing or a bad thing. But the greatest love of all, that you know that I know is called the agape love. That is the unconditional love of God. That is the love charity. God just giving you love because you, you, even when you don't deserve it, God loves you. Irrespective of your circumstance, irrespective of my circumstance, God just shows love. It's a selfless love. And it's the greatest investment anybody can have. For another person, it is the greatest kind of love. It is greater than all the love that I've described. I have told you about Philius. I have told you about uh, uh, about uh, Storch. I have told you about um, Eros, and I have also told you about um, uh, Philotia, something like that. That is the love for yourself. And this love called Agape is the love of God. This is the love that God has for you unconditionally. And God wants us to move to that kind of level, an unconditional love. Even when people don't deserve love, God wants you to show them love. Look at the scripture I read to you. I said there is a time we are in that season of love. We are in the atmosphere of love. Lehepa Rotaria, the whole world right now, they are talking about love. Love your neighbor, love other people. Love people. This is the commandment of God. Even Jesus told us that. He said, all oh, the summation of the Ten Commandments is that you love your God. Love the Lord thy God with all your strength, with all that strength, with all your might, with all your soul, with everything that is in you. And then he said, the second is you love your neighbor as yourself. And so I say, brother, sister, it is a time for love. But I bet you, you don't know how to love. This is the season. But I bet you, you have not experienced love. This is the season. But I bet you, you have not said to somebody, I love you, or you are too proud, or you are just shy, or you don't know how to say love, or I love you, or to receive love. This is the time to make that step. This is that time to take a step of faith and show love to somebody. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible says, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That's what he told Jeremiah. Let me show you in the scripture. Jeremiah chapter number 31. Look at what the Bible says in verse 3. God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, an eternal love. The love that is called agape. I have loved you from the foundation of the earth. I have loved you even when you don't deserve my love. I have loved you. God says, I have loved you. It's an unconditional love that does not depend on you or your works or your own effort. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Look at what the Bible says, Jeremiah 31. Look at verse number 3. The Bible says there, in verse 3, it says, The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. It says, Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I have drawn you closer to me because of my loving kindness. I have drawn you closer to me because of my own mercy. I have drawn you closer to me because of my own faithfulness. I have drawn you closer to me because of my own covenant, because of my own words, because I am committed to loving you. That is agape love. That is what God is saying. You see, God loves you. Oh, God loves me so much. He loves me with that condition. <laughs> when you are in sin, when you are wallowing in sin, when you are lost in after other gods, 
Some of you, you know all the places you have been to. You know all the gods you have bowed down to. You know all the evil, all the wickedness you have done. While you are doing all of that, God loves you so much that what He made provisions. He made provisions for you. Maparose Ketelia. He made provisions for me. When I think about the love of God, the agape love of God, I keep saying it repeatedly, and God bears me witness. Some of us, if not for the grace of God, we are so lost. Some of you hearing me, you are so lost that if not for the grace of God, if not for the goodness of God, if not for the loving kindness of God, if not for the love of the Almighty God and His word that He has spoken concerning you, you will be so lost forever. I will be so lost forever. But glory be to God. God has made provision for you. He made provision for me. Hallelujah. Because of his mercy, he ransomed you because of love. He ransomed me because of his love for me. He, he redeemed me from the jaw and the love of sin. He redeemed me from the jaw of death, from the jaw of eternal damnation, from the brink of eternal damnation. He rescued my soul. That God is still alive today. And he's saying to you, he's saying to me, it's a time to love. We are in a time to love. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16. To show you the greatest love of all. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world. The world. I think the, my name was there. For God so loved Benjamin. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. Whosoever should follow him. Whosoever should honor him. Whosoever shall hear him. Whosoever. Whosoever, it includes you, you will obtain that mercy of God. Whosoever, you are included in the love plan, in the love agenda, in the love mission of the Almighty God. You see, out of all the testimonies uh, that you have experienced throughout this year, out of all the miracles of God that you have experienced this year from the beginning of... Some people say, I have not testified, I have not seen any. <laughs> Shall you are hearing me. You can see me. You are not on hospital bed. Even if you are hospital bed, you are still alive. You can still breathe by yourself. Even if you are your oh, basicata, your heart. Do you know how long your heart has been there, beating by itself? How many times have you seen your heart? Even the doctors, when they look at your heart, they say, "Glory be to God." They see the mechanics of your heart. They see the biology of your heart pumping blood all around. You, even when you are sleeping, you deserve to appreciate the Almighty God. That is why I thank God. Your heart is beating by itself. Your kidney, your lungs, your organs, all of them working. Hala Mahanda. They are working well. <laughs> Some of you, you have not been to see a doctor this year. Is that not a reason to sh show appreciation to the, for the love of God for your life? Some of you, you have not had evil report this year. All you have been hearing is good news. Uh, is that not a reason to know that God loves you? God, out of all the testimonies that some of us have given, out of all the, the, the thanks given, out of all the gratitude, I want you. Because when somebody does good to you, the good thing is to reciprocate that love. You see, add a seed. A seed that speaks as a sweet smelling savour before the Almighty God. Let me show you. God says something in Psalm 105. Look at what it says in verse 42. Psalm 105. Look at verse 42 and 43, all the way to 44. The Almighty God says in Psalm 105, For the, verse 42, I am reading, For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham, his servant, God remembered his words, the word that you have spoken to him, because God says, Whatsoever you say in my ears, I will do it. He says, So is the word that proceeds from my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which I have sent it. God said, I have exalted my words above all my names. Look at it. He made a promise by his words. And the Bible says, For he remembered his holy promise. And Abraham, I always put myself there, and Benjamin, his servant, God remembered his words. And he remembered me. God will remember you in Jesus' name. Look at what it says in verse 43. And he brought forth his people. He brought forth my family. He brought forth his church. He brought forth my community, my friends, my nation. He brought them forth. And then it says, with joy. From the beginning of the year, God has brought you fought with joy, with celebration. And that's why I say, all of your thanksgiving, all of your gratitude. Ah, you know, some of you, you deserve to give God a hearty worship. 
alongside you, 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 you give God authentic praise. You should give God authentic worship. You see, you should give this God thanksgiving with gratitude. And then with all of that, you add a seat to it. That is what we have been doing. We've been saying, we bring this sacrifice of praise. We have been thanking God, yes. You have been grateful, yes. Because of the testimonies, because of the miracles, because of the faithfulness of the Lord in your life, in your family, God has demonstrated that He loves you. You reciprocated the goodness of God, the love of God, with your praise. You honored Him with worship. You honored Him with, with thanksgiving. But I say to you, with all of this, God is saying, give a seed. Go and plant a seed somewhere. So a seed that will speak to appreciate because God sowed a seed for you. And that's where we are saying it's a time to love. Look at what it says here. I will finish it off in verse 44. It says, And gave them the lands of the hidden. <laughs> and they inherited the labor of the people. The Bible says, The wealth of the Gentiles, they are laid in store for me. Oh, sorry. They are laid in store for you as well. <laughs> All the laboring, all the strongholds, all the kitty kitty, all the kata kata, all the strongholds of your enemies, of your adversaries, of the Gentiles, of the hidden. The Bible says they are stored up for me. Is God not amazing? They are laboring for me. La Talia, because God will promote me. He has said I am the head. He has said you are the head. So all their struggles, all their laboring, God will make you the head in Jesus' mighty name. You know, think about it. Has God been good to you this year, child of God, my friends? Has the Lord favored you this year at all? Has the Lord given you victory from all the battles, the battles you saw, the battles you did not see, the one you dreamt about, all the people pursuing you in your dreams, all of those dreams you can't even understand, the ones you don't remember. Have you experienced the goodness of your mighty God this year? Have you experienced the mercy or the loving kindness of this God this year? If you have, then these are some of the ways that the Lord has chosen. The Lord has chosen that if you love Him, then He has chosen that He loves you by giving you victory. By favoring you. He has given you blessings this year. Kept you alive. Demonstrated his love to you. Keeping you alive. Healthy. No, only recently we had somebody die. They went to a party and they died. Hmm? Can you imagine the, the pain that will bring? But I pray the name of Jesus. The enemy that is waiting the last hour. In the 11th hour, in the 12th hour, to take life will not take your life in Jesus' name. It will not take your children's life because they are soaked. They are covered in the blood of Jesus. It's a time to love. If you know how to give love, then you are exonerating yourself from the plan of the enemy. You are exonerating yourself from all the craftiness of the wickedness of the enemy. And his hands will not touch you. The hands of the enemy will not locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. His plans over you will not work will not materialize in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I have to rush up. You see, there are some ways that the Lord has chosen, child of God. He has chosen some ways, you know, that He loves you. All of these ways, the victory He has given you, these are the ways He has chosen to display His love. Some of the ways, you cannot quantify all the ways that God has shown you that He loves you. So, question is, how do you then show the Lord that you love Him in return? God has been good to you. How do you then show him that you appreciate his goodness? God has demonstrated his love to you. How do you demonstrate that you love him in return? I had this man of God. You see, if you, if you are not passionate about God, if you do not love God, if you do not love God passionately, then you are limiting the hands of God in your direction. You, can you imagine you know, a person who does not love God? You are limiting the hands of God. If God loves you, and you do not love him in return. You are limiting the victory. You are limiting the provision, the mercy, the faithfulness of God. His hand, you are limiting it. <laughs> you know, in my place, they say it is a child that lifts up his hand that his father and his mother will carry. Let's say the mother will carry. But the question is, why do I have to raise my hand? But that is what they say. The, the lifting up of your hand demonstrates that you want to be carried. That is, you are showing that I love you. Love me in return. I'm expecting love. I am giving you love. I'm raising my hand. When you lift up your hand to heaven, you are praising the Almighty God. When God sees you praising Him, He pays attention to you. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, so what am I saying? You see, let's have an idea of what God is saying. 
You see, one of the ways that you can show God that you love Him in return is by what? Is by obeying Him. Obey the Almighty God and accept His free gift. His free gift of love. I read it to you earlier. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His own. Whosoever receives Him or believes Him shall not die, shall not perish, but have eternal life. You will not die. Just accept that law. It is a time for law. You know a friend, you know a family. <laughs> they are not saved that do not know him this is the time to experience to share that love that agape love with them hallelujah to jesus this is that time to show and demonstrate the love of god that is what god is looking for primarily in this season one of that way is to want to show that love to them so that you yourself you are not saved be saved and serve the lord and the second of all is showing god demonstrating to God that you love him in return. Let me read this scripture to you. Numbers chapter 31. This is what God told Moses. Numbers chapter 31. Look at verse 50. I'll read from verse 50 quickly to 54. The Bible says there, Numbers 31, beginning from verse 15. The Bible says, We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord that every man had gotten of jewels of gold, of chains and bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eliezer, the priest, took the gold of them. And all, even all, wrought jewels. Verse 52. And all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundreds was 16,750 shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil every man for himself. And Moses and Eliezer, the high priest, took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. What is this scripture telling me, telling you? Is that God gave these men, these warriors, he gave them victory. They went into battle. God gave them victory. They were conquerors. He made them overcomers. The enemy did not kill them in the war. They got spoils. Jewels of gold, chains, bracelets, rings, earrings, tablets. And they brought it to the Almighty God. They brought it to the prophet of God. <laughs> they brought it to the house of God. You can use the same analogy for yourself. Since the beginning of the year, you have kept a job. You have been promoted. Some people promoted twice or thrice. You have received a pay rise. While others are going down. While others are jobless. While others are begging for food. Begging for bread. God has elevated you. God has given you victory. So what God is expecting you to do when he has saved you, from all the battles and giving you promotion is to come back to the Lord and show him gratitude with the spoil of the war. And that is what the Bible says here. They came back and the Bible tells us what they plan to do with it. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 26. 1 Chronicles chapter 26 and look at verse 27. The Bible says there in verse 1 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 27 it says out of the spoils won in battle did they dedicate to maintain the house of the lord so this is not their tithe this is not their offering out of all the spoils that they had the victory they came with the best that they have they bought all the gold all the earrings all the precious things to the almighty god to appreciate god to build the house and to maintain the house of the Lord. God is saying the same thing to you. In this season, child of God, number one, you must be saved. This is what God wants. A time to love. You know somebody who is not saved? You know a family that is not saved? Bring them to Jesus. Bring them to the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Number two is give a special offering to the Almighty God in this season to show Him it is not because of that that you are saved. You are, you are just demonstrating to him that you love him. Look at what these soldiers did. He gave them victory in battle and they came back with all the earrings, with all the gold, with all the diamond, all the precious gifts, all the spoils of war, the, all the earrings, tablets, bracelets. They came back with everything. You have been promoted. 
God has given you peace of mind. He is opening doors for you. Your immigration status is doing it for you. Is that not a reason to thank God? They have not deported you yet. Is that not a reason to glorify God? We are not weeping over you. You are not on the hospital bed. Is that not a reason to thank God? Listen, child of God. You see, in this season, you can call somebody. You can tell them, I love you. <laughs> uh, you know, somebody sang uh, a song years ago. Uh, he said it this way. I will not sing it, but I will read it out to you because I know it. I remember it. He said, loving somebody and somebody loves you back. And then he says, to be loved and be loved in return is the only thing that my heart desires. You know that song. So, do you know who sang it? Hmm. Let me know if you know who sang the song. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't know, then you don't know that you don't know. Amen. <laughs> you see, love makes you like God, child of God. Love makes you like God. Your father. Your father says, I am love. I preached this last Sunday. God does not have love. God is love. I told you last Sunday. The Lord is coming. Be holy and love. He is coming. <laughs> he is coming. I said, be holy. God is holy, holy God. And he calls you into being a holy person. So I said to you last Sunday, be holy. And I said, love as well. Because that is the nature of your God. Of my God, of your father. So I said to you, God is saying, be holy like I am holy and love because the Bible says that God is love. He does not have love. So God wants you to be like your father. He wants you to be like your own dad. A, a, a God that is full of love. So we have to be like our father. Be like God. Let me show you the scripture in First John chapter number 4. First John chapter number 4. I won't read all of this, but I will want you to read First John chapter 4 beginning from verse 7 all the way to, it's a long verse, all the way to verse 21. I love this, but this is the essence of it. He is saying here, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. So, then he carries on. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. If you don't love, you don't know God. He carries on. He says, God is love for god is love in verse 9 he says in this was manifested the love of god towards us because that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him therein herein is love not that we love god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved if god so loved us i will stop here now it says, we ought also to love one another. So you can carry on all the way to uh, verse number 21 there. And look at what I will read 20 to you. And this is the problem we have. You see, look at 18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. You love somebody, you cannot be afraid. <laughs> A lot of people live their lives with fear because there is no love. Look at what it says again. It says, he says, because fear hath torment, he hath what? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now I think, 19. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God, and hated his brother. Let me read that to you. If any man... <laughs> Karazatabara. You go to church, you go to family meetings, you are eyeing your brother with one eye. He said they are evil, he said they are wicked. The Bible says, if a man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. And you know the original liar. That means you are not of God. You are like your father, the liar. The devil lied from the beginning. He said you are a liar. God calls you a liar. For he that loveth not his own brother had not seen what? Whom he had seen. <laughs> he said, how can he then say you love God whom you have not seen? Let me read it again. It says, for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Let me read it again to you, verse 21. And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God 
love his brother also. It's the time to love. It's a time to love. So you love God. Praise God. You are in church. You're lifting up your hands. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. And then you look around. You see your brother. You see your sister. You say, look at her. Eh? She, she's, you envy her. You want to even kill them in the inside the church. God will have mercy on us in Jesus' name. But the Bible says, look at that 21 again. He says, this commandment have we received from him that he who loved God must love his brother also. You see, give love, I'm urging you in this season. You will receive good rewards, I can assure you. If you give love in this, in this season, because it is a commandment from God. It says, love your brother also. Love your sister also. So I am saying to you, if you give love to somebody, what am I talking about? A smile is love. It's not all about money. It's, all about, it's not all about gifts, right? No, a smile. A text message. Hello, how are you? Merry Christmas. That is love. Somebody you have not seen or spoken to from the beginning of the year, make an effort to show them you love them. Call them. Treat them. WhatsApp them. Message them. Zoom them. <laughs> Blog them. <laughs> treat them. Whichever way. Instagram them if you want to. Whatever way you want to do it, just connect with them. Show them you love them. Send them a message. I will say the message from your brother I have never seen in my life. I have never spoken to one to one like this. He sent me a message. He said, how are you this morning, pastor? How are you, sir? And he made my heart. And I replied to him. He said, God bless you. I just wanted to say, I hope you are well. I just wanted to say, God bless you. I just want to say, Merry Christmas to you. I wish you a Happy New Year 2023. Do you think I will hate that person? I will love that person even more. Me too, I replied. Because when you give love, you get love back. This is like the law of sowing and reaping. You, you, you receive, you give. <laughs> I am saying to you, if you give love in this season, my brother, if you give love in this season, my sister, you will receive rewards. Let me say that one more time. If you give love, because it is a time, it is a time to, to love. If you give love in this season, it is timely, it is strategic, it is wise. If you give love in this season, you will receive good rewards. <laughs> okay, let me give you an example. If you, if you have your wife, if you give your wife, for example, you give her a bouquet of lovely flowers or a box of chocolate that she likes, you will she will reciprocate your love with good things. Hello? You get it? <laughs> you get it? <laughs> I hope you get it. Well, look, some of you that have bad minds, what am I saying is that she will cook special meals for you. Uh -huh. She will go to the kitchen, go to the market and buy special meals for you. Take your mind out of those places. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Amen. Now, what am I saying? <laughs> you give her a special gift in Christmas time. You show her love. Ah, uh, she will re she will retaliate. <laughs> no reciprocate. She will retaliate and give you something special. Special things in Christmas. Some of you have not received anything special this year. You don't even know the wife you married. You don't even know the husband you married. Give something special. It is a time to love. Give love. Again, I said to you, if you have a girlfriend, think about it. If you have a girlfriend, the girlfriend that you have been dating for the past six years, you have never proposed to. And this season, you show love, you, 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 you show her. After dating her for six years, all of a sudden, you give her a diamond ring, an engagement ring in this season, and you add to that engagement ring, you say, you say to her, by this time next year, you will be my wife. <laughs> you promise to marry that sister and make her a fulfilled woman. Then you know that you have sown a good seed into your own future. Because the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, find it a good thing and obtain it favor from the lord you see the best plan of god will begin to unfold in your life it begins to unravel in your life because you have begun by finding a helpmate god did not just abandon adam in the garden he gave him a helpmate so mister i can do it by myself i can do all things through christ who strengthens me without getting married, without a sister, making a sister happy. Let's see how far you will go in Jesus' name. Now, think about it. True love, talking about love, if you visit your mother in the village, 
Your mother's in the village. The mother you don't see, you don't even call. All of a sudden, you show up, you turn up and visit your mother in the village. Not just calling her. You visit your mother in the village. You renovate her dilapidating house. Or you buy her a new house. Or you buy her a new car. <laughs> you can be sure that that kind of law, she will retaliate. <laughs> I use that intentionally here. Yeah? She will reciprocate with a law that for the next 40 days and 40 nights, <laughs> it is special prayers for you on special mountains. The mountains you don't know, your name will be there. She'll be praying for you to never fall. And that prayer is effectual. That prayer is effective. <laughs> it's a time to love. I want to say this to you. If you visit your pastor in this season, you visit your papa, you visit your mama, the man who has or the woman who has been a shepherd over you, who has been feeding you, praying for you, interceding for you throughout the year, and you make a substantial transfer, <laughs> let's say of money, let's use money, you will transfer a substantial amount of money to his account or you buy him a special uh, designer wristwatch you know what he likes or he likes suits you buy him a special suit not the suit they send around the corner the bend down suit the buy one get one free suit <laughs> you buy him a special suit you know what happens when that man wears that suit he will always remember you Yes, Benjamin gave me this resort. He will mention your name or oh, this suit. He will it will be him. He will be speaking. And then you too, you will know that for the next seven days, not just seven days, he will mention your own matter to God. He will mention your case as if others are not there. But because your seed is a sweet smelling savour, it is speaking louder. He will mention your case to God. Some of you are not sharp. Some of you are not wise. <laughs> Give your papa. A special gift, not your usual uh, papa take this. Uh, no, 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 no. If you if you gave him a goat last year, buy him a cow this year, and see whether he will he will forget you, and see whether your life will not advance. I remember several years ago, uh, almost twenty years or over now. Uh, you know when I was an associate pastor in the nineties, I gave my own pastor a gift. I went into his office. I have never shared this before, but because it is a time of love. I went into his office. I presented a check of five thousand pounds to him. The man stood up. He was sitting down before. Uh, you know how much five thousand pounds. If I give some of you five hundred pounds today, you will be praying for me from now to December. But I gave this almost twenty years ago. You know, or over twenty years ago now, five thousand pounds. I received prophecies and prayers. I see those prayers will take me to heaven. I see that is the reason for my salvation. He was so happy and he felt loved and appreciated. He felt valued and appreciated. Other people will give him 200. Pastor, take this 100. But compare my 5,000. And it wasn't that I was the super rich in the church. But you should love. You appreciate your papa. You appreciate your man of God. You trust me, even heaven will open for you because he will make intercession for you. Like Jesus is seated on the right hand side, he will make intercession for you as well. <laughs> Can you then imagine when you obey and give God, especially in this season, you give God the, in this season of love, you give God your everything. If you give God in this season, you can know that you are simply demonstrating that you are what? That you appreciate his love towards you. You appreciate his mercy towards your family. You appreciate all the great and mighty things that he has done for you throughout this year, done for your family, for your children, and for your business, done in your career, in every area of your life. Let me help you this way. To put love in perspective. You see, when someone has it in their mind, you see, some of you don't appreciate the love of God. I want to help you. I'm saying that if you then give love, I've given you examples. Your girlfriend, your wife, your mother, your papa, your mama, your, your spiritual father. You show all of these people love. You receive something. Then you can then imagine God. <laughs> this God, let me help you. This is a God. This is a God. He is somebody that had it in his mind to come and die the death that you should have died. He had it in mind and he's coming. He in his mind, he had it in mind, he is coming to die for me, the death that I should die. Is that not love? Pray with me, child of God. Say with me, Father.
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you for sending your son to take my place. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I shall not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. Nothing good will die in my hands in Jesus' name. Think about it. He came purposely to die, Makazulia. He came to die for me. He had me in mind. Is that not love? Love in action. Love demonstrated. And that's what we are talking about. It is a time to love. When someone has it in their mind, this God had it in his mind, to declare you, declare me sickness free. He was wounded for your sins. The Bible says, the chastisement of your sins was laid upon him, and by his stripes you are healed. Pray with me, child of God. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for you took away my sicknesses, my infirmities. You took away my afflictions. You took away my pains. They will not return in Jesus' name. Therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus, I shall not carry any sickness in my body. I shall not carry any affliction in my body because my body is your temple in the mighty name of Jesus. Think about it. When I'm talking about showing God love in this season, because it's a time to love. I told you about showing your girlfriend love, showing your wife love, showing your mama love, showing your father too love, and showing your papa, your spiritual father love. Now, think about it. When somebody sees you struggling <laughs> with the issues of life, and he says, I want to carry your burden. Somebody says, I want to carry your yoke. Somebody says, I want to carry your yoke. I want to carry your burden. He says, carry my own. Carry my yoke. My yoke is easy. Child of God, pray with me. In this season, say with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for carrying my burdens. Thank you for carrying my yokes. <laughs> thank you for carrying my heavy burdens. I carry your own yoke. I carry your own burdens because they are easy. They are lighter. Thank you, Lord, for rolling away my shame. Thank you for rolling away my reproaches in Jesus' mighty name. You think about it. Why do we say love God? Show God love. You see, when someone looks at you, this is God. He looks at you. He looks at me. And he says, by his blood, he will destroy the spells. He will destroy the charms. He will destroy the curses. He will destroy the handwriting and the ordinances that hold your father. They are, they are still being held. The one that held your mother, they are still being held. The one that held your generation, your ancestors, the one you have inherited, he says, I will take them away. He says he wants to change your story so that you become a head and not the tail. Is that not God loving you? Child of God, pray with me. Say with me, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for breaking the curses. Thank you for breaking the spells. Thank you for breaking the enchantment. Thank you for breaking the ordinances and the powers that have held me down. The powers that steal, the powers that kill, the powers that destroy, they have lost their hold over me, over my wife, over my children, over my household, over my family, over the church of God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Child of God, I say this to you, I'm going to round up now. You have received so much love, my brother. You have received so much love, my sister. Give love to somebody in this season. That is the essence of my message. Sir, ma, you have received so much love in this season. From the beginning of the year, ah, share some of it. Eh? Is it difficult to share love? Is it difficult to smile? Smiling is love. You see your neighbor, you frown. You, you, you don't talk to your neighbors. I have received gift from my neighbor already. I have received card from my neighbor already. Eh? Why are you so difficult? Eh? Why? Hmm? In this heavenly race, does it mean that you must not smile as you are going to heaven? Does it say you must not smile with people? Does it say you must you must only be looking up to Jesus and not see? <laughs> my friend, get says get wisdom. You know, <laughs> you can use social media. You know, to tell people, tell that brother, tell that sister, I love you. Love your neighbor is what the Bible says. Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Why is it difficult then for you to say you love somebody? Remember, Jesus told us, if a man says, I love God and hate his brother, he says, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? How? And you have a commandment. So obey the commandment is what I'm saying. It's a time to love. Take advantage of the season. 
Take advantage of this atmosphere. That uncle, that brother, that your sister, the one you have not spoken to for several weeks, several years. Why don't you reach out to them and say, hello, how are you doing? Why don't you wake them up like that pastor and say, pastor, how are you today? How was your night? <laughs> Did you sleep well? You can tell them that. You can ask them, pastor, how was your night? Did you sleep well? Have you eaten today? It's love. Show love somehow. At least you are concerned enough to ask. <laughs> the pastor was not happy. God bless you, man of God. Doctor, I bless you. <laughs> the man of God was not happy. He said, let it stop in 2022. All those that ask me, pastor, how was your night? <laughs> Pastor, did you wake up well? He, said, he doesn't want that kind of uh, But ask me how my night was. It's love. At least you are thinking of me. That's why you, you, you can ask me how my night was. If you don't care about me, you don't care how my night was. You don't care whether I woke up well or not. Because from that conversation, you will know my need. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, the Bible says, where love abounds, you can use social media, all the major platforms. To reach out to somebody to say i love you you see where love abounds darkness is absent there show love when you love your family members it's because there's no love that's why people want to kill you and that's why your prayer increases further than die on monday further than die on tuesday bury them on wednesday how about you pray that throughout the year and next year 2023 the vision is still must die <laughs> the lord will deliver you in jesus name eh? <laughs> they escaped in 2021 they followed you to 2022 in 2023 you are still praying they must die they must die how about god have mercy on us in jesus name may all your enemies the house of wickedness the ones that do not want, want to take your peace may the almighty god take peace from them and give you rest in jesus name so that you can go ahead and serve god in peace that's what the bible says that we've been delivered may go ahead and worship god that is the essence that's the plan of god the deliverance is not every day that we've been delivered from those that hate us from wicked works once you are delivered then you go ahead and serve god in truth and in spirit not every day deliverance deliverance oh lord deliver me tuesday oh lord deliver me yeah 1980 lord deliver me yeah 1990 oh lord deliver me when we then know god when we then serve god when we experience god Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, where love is, darkness is absent there. Because God is love. God, light and darkness cannot cohabit. Because God is light. Jesus is light. Light and darkness, they cannot. I am in the light. Darkness and the works of darkness and the wicked works of darkness, they are not permitted around me. What about you, my brother? What about you, my sister? You see, where love is present, wickedness and the works of wickedness, they cannot prevail. You don't want to hurt somebody you love, even because they love you. Even when you when you love somebody, before you hurt them, you must plan to hurt them. And if you truly love God, because the Bible says here, you know, and the command is we have received the commandment that he that loveth God must love his brother also. You know, it takes love to see the soul that is rushing to hell and reach out to them. It takes love. <laughs> oh, I'm shy, Pastor. I can't uh, talk to my neighbors. Why don't you invite them? Organize a special event in your church or in your cell, in your house. Have a reason to celebrate something. They will come to celebrate. Use wisdom. You see, if you love, you will be loved in return. I'm rounding up now. So the seed of love in somebody's life. You are expecting love, so that seed. You see, if you reach out and you show love to another person, you will also receive love in return. It is a law. Because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. So you give love, you receive love. Whatever you give, that's why the Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that is the word of God, he shall reap. You sow love, you will reap love back in return. Press down. Shake it together and run it over. That is the word of God. You say paradecho in uh, 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 the, the reason no one is showing you love is because you yourself you don't have the mind to show love or to share love first. I say give it a try. It will surprise you. It will surprise you because the Bible says from the abundance of your, of the love that you have received, you have received abundant love from God. Give 
some love back to some people. Finally, I say this to you, my friends, my family. It is a time to love. I love you. God loves me. I have received love from God. So I am eternally grateful to the Almighty God. And because of what I have received from the abundance of the love, the grace, the mercy, the loving kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness of God, from this covenant-keeping God that I have received, I am also sharing with you in this season. I love you, my friends. I love you, my brother, my sister. For what? I love you. Why? Because you have been with me from the beginning of the year. You have been supporting me from the beginning of the year, supporting my ministry, watching me, praying for me. You know, and you are in return. You are being blessed by the word of God that you are receiving. Some have shown me love by sharing our YouTube. Some it is love. You can share the sermon. You can share it with your family. After all, you can't go on evangelism. Share the sermon to someone to liberate them. It's a time for love. So, some of you have helped me. You have shared our YouTube sermons. You have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You have commented and appreciated. You have liked it. You have shared it. If you have not done so, I urge you, this is the right season. Show me love in return and do so. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like it comment on it and share it i love you and god bless you in the name of jesus i say happy holidays to you merry christmas to you and to your family in advance it's a time to love my friends it's a time to love my sister it's a time to love my brother take advantage of this moment give love it makes you relevant give love and receive love the lord bless you richly in the mighty name of jesus god bless you in jesus name have a great day Shalom. Hallelujah.